Hi everyone, welcome back to Beyond Your Knowledge. Okay, so today we are going to be studying an interesting topic and it is the inducers and our inhibitors of the CP, CYP450. Okay, so what is this? All those things we're going to learn right now. But before we continue, I would like to share with you Hebrews and Hebrews. Oops, I had a mistake there. So Hebrews 10, 24, 25 says that, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Okay. Probably you're saying, the day drawing near, which day is drawing near? Well, we know, or the Bible tells us, that the day that is drawing near is the second coming of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, which is going to be a big, huge event that every see will, every eye will see it. Okay? Okay. In Jesus' name. Now, what are we going to be learning? Inducers and inhibitors of the CYP450. So, so CYP450, it is in the liver. Okay, so we're going to mention some inducers and some inhibitors. Well, and I think it could, could be a good idea that we keep in mind. So, the inducers i'm going to be here on the on the on the right side okay i will i will use this okay so let's just right here okay so we can find find the deliver okay so the inducers are going to be here and here are going to be the inhibitors okay so let's just start with the inducers so basically we have so we're going to mention five Okay, so what are those five? So those inducers, for example, we have carbamazepine. We have another one, which is P. We have two P's, one R and one G. So G is for griseofoldin. The P, the first P is phenytoin, okay? The other P is for phenobarbital. And which one do you think that is the R? Rifampin. Okay. Now, if you give any of those to the patient, carbamazepin, phenytoin, phenobarbital, rifampin, grisofulbin, so you are inducing the CP450. So the CP450 is going to be working more. But why we put these inducers and inhibitors or versus inhibitors? Because if you are given one which is it induced the C450 and then you give a drug that is going to inhibit C450, how this drug that induces CYP450 is going to be is going to work if it's inhibited by any of those drugs that I'm going to mention right now. So we're going to mention the first one, cimetidine. Cimetidine, it is an inhibitor of the CYP450. The other is ciprofloxacin, okay? So it is important that we learn this very well. So the other is erythromycin. Erythromycin, uh, yeah, so I think that should be with letter I, erythromycin. No, yeah, I was right first. Yeah, erythromycin it has three. Yeah, eri yeah, two Y's and one. Yeah, erythromycin. Then the next one is some antifungals. So which one antifungals? So antifungals. But you say, oh, but that is a plenty of antifungals. So basically the azoles. Okay, the azoles. Well, another. <laughs> I I will keep this. Uh, another one is isoniazide. Isoniazide. The other one is Ritonavir. 
right ton of beer which is a protease inhibitors okay so the amine is going to inhibit the enzyme called protease and I'm going to mention one more here those are more the all those are the most common one so that we need to keep in mind so but could be more uh, drugs so yeah that is one more and why I didn't mention it at the beginning that the middle neither now but mention at the end because it is not a medication but it is a beverage that probably a lot of people enjoy and it's called grape fruit juice why okay wow grapefruit juice and other inhibitors or the cyp450 okay now just to review cimetidine ceprofloxacin erythromycin antifungals isoniazide ritonavir grapefruit juice now there are some drugs that are going to be metabolized in the liver and another drugs that are going to be metabolized in the kidney but since those are inducers or inhibitors of the CYP450 they work in the liver but there are other drugs that also work in the liver and we're going to mention some of those so we're going to talk a little bit about statins statins it is a very common drug today why because a lot of people has high levels of cholesterol why we have high levels of cholesterol lack of exercise too much eating fat and eating late at night all those things so it's affecting every day more our population so and we say okay that's fine let's just give a drug let's just give a medication to the patient it's okay if the patient needs it we need to do it but why we don't orientate more our patients okay so for prevention prevent diseases common diseases that it just you can prevent by diet eating vegetables fruits less fat I'm not saying that you don't eat any fat because we need fat for certain process of the body yes we need but it is it, that is healthy fat and unhealthy fat so but yeah this is another topic also we can prevent with exercise all of those things prevention is number one we as a physician we need to to orient give orientation teach our patients okay remember if that is a bible verse that says that my people perish for lack of knowledge or because we can have the knowledge right now we are learning but if we don't transmit the knowledge so people is going to perish okay perish now do we want that let's just think about it okay but that was just a hint remember that this is beyond your knowledge so where we can just be well, whatever they are doing this to, to improve um, the life of our patients now but it is important that we learn about statins statins are very effective agents so why they are effective they are effective reducing they are effective reducing the LDL cholesterol okay so so what is the mechanism of action so they are HMG CoA uh, um, reductase inhibitors okay so this is as the things now those um, that are the 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 the, the as the things has some side effects which are not that fun like myopathy okay like also hepatitis 
but the good news is one time we stop the drug so those things can reverse now myopathy it is not that common it is rare but that's happened and basically how we can define myopathy so let's just say that is rare here rare sorry also but how we can uh, what else we can see about myopathy so basically it is myo means muscles so the patient is going to have muscle pain okay so the patient uh, can have muscle pains but besides the muscle pain the patient is going to have the serum creatinine kinase is going to be higher than normal 10 times higher so also the patient is going to have creatinine kinase elevation of the creatinine kinase okay so high now there are some exception like probacetine okay that doesn't happen but the other acetine drug like simbacetine lovacetine and atorvacetine so let's just write it here so okay so all those so simbacetine lovacetine atorvacetine So all those cysteine, they they are metabolized by those CP four fifty three A four. Okay, so they are metabolized. And why we're talking about um, why we're talking about the 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 C four P four fifty because it is important that we check the related with one drug and another. Sorry, now. Let's just move on. There is another drug which is this one, remember, that is metabolized. It is not an inducer, it is not an inhibitor, it just metabolizes in the CP450 this acetine. But what about if I come and I give to the patient erythromycin, for example? Erythromycin, it is, uh, erythromycin, it is an inhibitor. <coughs> Excuse me. It is an inhibitor of the CP450, and now you come to the patients. I mean, the patients come to you. You you give the 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 drug. The patient is working with uh, acid things and it's working well. But then the patient get an infection. So you need to treat the infection with the bacterial infection with erythromycin. And now then the patients come finish the treatment with erythromycin. But because erythromycin inhibits the C word per 50 where acetines are metabolized so that's mean that then the patient can come back with the the cholesterols again come back to be high so for this reason it is important we check all those things in our the history take, we need to take the history to check what kind of drugs the patient is taking okay and avoid polypharmacy so avoid so many drugs now erythromycin also so let's just talk a little bit more about erythromycin here, okay? Erythromycin, we already mentioned that um, inhibit um, um, CYP450, okay? Also, cause myopathy. Now, if you, <laughs> the patient is already risk taking acetines which increase uh, have the risk of myopathy now you it's going to inhibit the zero per 50 the drug this drug is not going to be working and the thing is not going to be working because you're giving erythromycin but the erythromycin still cause the side effect as a myopathy okay so for this reason the patient is taking can increase the risk of myopathy now also Erythromycin increases the serum concentration of atorvacetine, okay? Atorvacetine, which is one of those that we mentioned. So, uh, yeah. And by 40%. Now, there are, you say, okay, but erythromycin, it is, what kind of drug it is? It is an antibiotic, but it is a macrolide, okay? So, it is a macrolide, and there are another microlytes such as clarithromycin that also inhibit your CP453A4. 
Well, acetromycin, which is another macrolide. So let's just say here erythromycin before we continue, and clarithromycin. Yeah, so because those two, but that is another drug which is another macrolide called azithromycin. But azithromycin doesn't have this significant effect on the CP450. So, no significant. Okay, so now if you, it is important that we get that image. Well, um, just to review, to keep in mind um, the inhibitors, so we mentioned cimetidine, ciprofloxacin, and erythromycin, and clarithromycin, but not acetromycin, not, and antifungals, so azoles, also, um, Another that we can mention it is cyclosporin. Okay, so let's just add it here. And also ketoconazole. Okay, so add it ketoconazole. Um, cyclosporin. Yeah, there are several. Okay. I well, just mentioning some of those and yeah so the HIV protease inhibitors that uh, we mentioned the grapefruit that we mentioned all those okay so also one one more point here that estatins as we mentioned that can cause myopathy and or can cause also rhabdomyolysis, okay? Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, the agurina, uh failure that can happen um, as a sequela of the rhabdomyolysis. So those patients have the risk the to develop uh, a curina failure why because rhabdomyolysis can uh, can precipitate the, the, the situation okay so yeah for the rhabdomyolysis okay So thanks you guys, I think that we're done with this. So now thank you so much for watching. And uh, we remember we can do all things through Christ and us and God bless.